Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, lady! Here we go. And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Tribooth. Don't forget the code PAP200 to get your 2023 $200 discount on your Tribooth. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Now, talking about being heard, we're talking microphones, which seems to be everybody's favourite. Unusually um, for this, this show. Is, <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Unusually for this house, yeah. as I'm told, frequently right. by the rest of the family. Ah, oh, well. Who are bored shitless with my <laughs> ravings about preamps and microphones. Ah, oh, well. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Rode have recently released the NT-USB Plus, mm. uh, their new USB mic, mm. and um, they were kind enough to give us all a microphone to have a play with and review. And an arm. And an arm. And an arm. And what an arm. All of an arm. Yeah. Yeah. And what an arm it is. PSA 1 Plus. Plus the one. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good, actually. I love it. That boom arm is great. Look, I can move Um, it without a squeak. Look, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. Nice. Yes. I'm moving mine up and down and side to side. It makes no squeaks. Mm, That's very cool. I love that. Very cool. But back to the USB microphone, mm. we had a play. I, I played around with it, and I was actually quite taken aback to my ears how good it was and yeah. how it sounded like a straight, normal condenser microphone. What did you guys think? Uh, I mean, I'll say you know right out of the gate that the USB mic stigma is really limited to the fact that it's just kind of, it's a branding of being, you know, sort of an, an amateur or a punter, you know, as some might say. But in terms of a technical ability of a microphone to pick your voice up cleanly and accurately, it's not a limitation. I mean, it just isn't. That The technology has matured. USB has plenty of power to power the microphone. You know, the electronics have been miniaturized and, and massaged and improved. And, you know, so it's, it's really not a fidelity issue so much but i do wonder if noise is higher than a normal mic because of its usb preamp so i'm wondering what you think uh bravo my poor old mac doesn't have a usb c connection so i haven't been able to plug mine in but ap sent me a file of his um yeah i think i think you're right i think there's some noise there and the other thing that i would be interested in playing with and i was hoping to have ready for today and i haven't had a chance but i would be interested to know how it takes processing so mm-hmm. it sounds great for a USB mic. I think it sounds really nice. But what happens well, to that? What does that once mean, you... though? Well, not to poke holes in that, but what does it mean for a mic to take processing? Like, okay, what, what so would, what would you hear in the mic that would make you think? Mm, okay, it really well, take well, well, we all know that compression would be the main one. So we all know that compression yeah. basically, you know, brings up any ugly little details. It will bring them out. Right. So brings out the flaws. Yeah. Um. So thinking about thinking about a big part of my business being radio imaging and usually on a finished voiceover, there's at least three compressors and one limiter. (laughs) There's a fair bit of, you know, compression going on. So how would it take to that, you know, is there things that you're not hearing in a clean signal um, that once you start compressing and playing with it, you start to go, oh, crap. That's the only thing I'd be interested in seeing. But... Um, sure. Th- but I mean, look, it's really not a microphone for that anyway. I mean, I, I imagine that it's a microphone that they're aiming at podcasters and um, content creators, creators who really aren't doing yeah. that much processing, if any, to it anyway. So, f- I mean, yeah. for the purpose for which is intended, it's a bloody brilliant mic. Yeah. Uh, I, from what I heard from AP, the, what he sent me sounded sweet. When I was playing around with it, I, I sort of lined it up. I got the OC. I did a take with the OC. Once again, not terribly scientific at all. And just cut a few different bits in from different mics with the USB plus and a normal, you know, diaphragm, a well, large diaphragm mic. And I could hear the difference. I mean, the OC does 
err on the side of having a nice bit of cut to it. And I've just found the into USB plus just a little bit more on the dull side. But that seems to be, like I said before, that seems to be a road signature thing. It's like the NTG3 is very much like that as well. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, as I said before, I was quite surprised how good it sounded. And I was more curious about whether it would take well um, if you were in a pillow fort. So it'd be the thing you chuck in your bag and if yeah. you have to do a quick, quick job somewhere, would that work for you? Yeah, and, and also, you know, of course, what sets this one apart from the previous generation is, of course, the onboard... Ooh, Robert wants to call us. Should we put him on the Should we put him, put on, him on the show? Put him on the show. Let's see what Robert Marshall has to say. Robert, you're Robert, on Robert, what air. do you think? Are we, are we doing a show? Yeah. <laughs> What's your thoughts? <laughs> we're asking you what you think of the Rode NT-USB. <laughs> no, we're actually in the middle of recording a quick episode about the Rode NT-USB right now. Yeah, I know. I... I I didn't know we were doing this today. Uh, oh, yeah, we, yeah. An email went around over the last few days about that. I can jump on. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. Your, your, your text was about 20 minutes ago, I guess. I'm recording on his track, and I have Source Connect open, ready for him. Oh, is he jumping on? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll hold my thought, but what I was going to do is talk about the DSP, and then I was going to go through the different DSP. Ooh, hello. Robert's on. Hey, chaps. Hello. Hello. Hello, hey, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> How are you liking your Rode NT USB Plus? I was quite impressed with it for what I expected for a USB microphone. It's um, certainly probably one of the most advanced USB microphones next to the, I guess, the hype mic from yeah. Um, yeah. Apogee. And um, but that's a lot more expensive. Like twice yeah, oh yeah, like much. three times more expensive. I think. Yeah. Yeah. At least twice, for sure. Yeah, And it's solid. It weighs a lot. I mean, if you're buying by the pound, you definitely got a good deal. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but it's... And you get a legit pop screen. It's a nice setup. This this stands a little bit like you can make it fall over. It's not like the most... But it's it's a good desk stand. Oh, the arm mount is great. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. arm is awesome. The yeah. PSA 1 plus arm is and And solid. the setup with the windscreen is about as good as it gets as far as like being perfectly positioned and not in the way. Now, just to be clear for everybody, the arm is a separate product. Like we got them bundled. We got a bundle sent yeah, to it's us. A different so we got deal. both. PSA 1 plus is the arm. The NT USB plus is the mic. They probably sell them as a bundle. Um, they came in one box. Yeah, or in two retail boxes, but in one big box. But anyway, sorry, Robert. I was just going to say that I think the blue light really, unfortunately, cheapens it. You know what? I thought it was going to be obnoxiously bright, bright blue. It's not very bright, so it's not no. super irritating. I actually kind of like it because it it lets you know the mic's on. <laughs> yeah, I guess okay. you got that. It does. Like, yeah, you know yeah, that yeah. the mic is on. I guess. Yeah. I mean, um, when in a lit studio, it's very subtle. In a dark studio, it's quite noticeable. So it depends on where you're using it. Like, a lot of us are using these, going to be using these on podcasts and videos and YouTubes and stuff. And that slightly glowing blue will be pretty unnoticed or very subtle. I yeah, think. I think you so know, too. But it depends on the scenario. Yeah, I just think it's gimmicky, like to put it inside the basket. Like, it's trendy though. You know, yeah, there's know. a lot of That's other mics mean. coming out in this category, especially for live streamers and gamers. That's that the lights. thing about it. That's the total thing about it, is it makes it seem like down market. Like, oh. Yeah, but then again, Lewitt, Lewitt did the same thing with theirs. Remember they got the glowing light inside one of their mics? Heck, mm. the Townsend, the $1,500 Townsend Lab Sphere has a white one, a white light glowing. Inside of yeah. it? Inside the basket. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So yeah, it's happening Get more McKee. and more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's it is trend. I mean, and if and if this mic is going to be marketed to gamers, that's something yeah. that they're going to look for. I mean, some of the really crazy ones have multiple color LED, you know, RGB LEDs. Yeah, exactly. Really? Those, that's even really worse. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. 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 But yeah. if I can hook it up to my Philips light bulb system and change the colors, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey Google, change the color of my microphone. Yeah. Since you mentioned processing, should I go just flip through them and you can hear all the yeah. different Yeah, moves? they are. Yeah, sure. But they're just push button, right? There's no there's yep. no finesse. Nope. There's yeah. no they're they're for they're for gamers or mm -hmm. you know, podcasters, podcasters yeah. totally. Yeah. Have the, yeah. So the first button is is input gain, so we all know what that is. And I'm only at about fifty percent on the gain scale, and it's quite hot. 
Yeah. So it's got a lot of gain. Then we have high pass filters. So if you've got 150, which is pretty thin, Whoa. flat. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. There's flat. And there's 75, which is probably where I would leave it just yeah. to make sure I don't pick up the passing aircraft that fly over my freaking apartment. <laughs> um, At least they're flying over your apartment, not through it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes it sounds like they're flying through it. <laughs> Can you go back to the 150 high pass? Sorry, just for one sec. So now I'm on the 150 high pass wow, filter, which doesn't really neuter it completely. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. But it definitely seems gradual. thins out the low end. Yeah, it's yeah. I think it's a slope, a shallow yeah, slope. Yeah, it's yeah. Maybe 12 dB per it's octave or something. Still a lot, isn't it? Wow. I mean, it's it's one, a lot. So maybe on a lady you could use it, but I don't think you'd get away with that. It's 75 or, yeah. 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 There's three settings though, isn't there? Or, well, there's flat 75 and 150. Yeah, so those are the yeah. three. Yeah, right. so 75 yeah. is probably 75 safe. is pretty, pretty safe for me. Um, then there's a noise gate, which... I ha I, at first I was like I think they did a good job. Then it's I not an expander. It and, no, it cuts. It seems to to me. I, yeah, but not entirely. But it doesn't always open quickly enough. Yeah. I noticed. It, well, anyway, here it, it is. So here's the noise gate turning on the noise gate and uh, one two one two one two one two three four one two noise gate noise gate. Noise gate, noise gate. Here, Once in a while, let it get it flips really quiet open. and then take a deep breath and see what part of the breath it catches. See? Yeah, there's a click yeah, in there. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's the tricky part with gates, right? They're, yeah. They're, even if even if you were to call it an expander, it's a little uh heavy handed. And unfortunately that's kind of mirrors the gate preset that came on the road. With the road one, the road, yeah. It it podcaster, should have been an expander, right. not a not a gate with a range. It should have right. just been like a right. a nice slope. Because if not, you don't get yes. that little snap in the middle of the breath like that. Right, right. Yeah, it's not an algorithm they've nailed. Like, for example, DBX has been no t really their their expander is really smooth and mm -hmm. and more and more gradual. This one's a little bit more. Even chunky. the expander on the Behringer Composer is more smooth. Yeah, it's yeah, it's something they could improve upon, but it's DSP. They can. They definitely can. Um, yeah. If I'll turn that off and then go to the compressor, the compressor is fine. It's not. Uh, it doesn't over boost the output. It goes up a dB or two. I mean, you could hear it go up slightly in output level, but not dramatically. Yeah. So that's good. So is that so just on off the compressor? It's on off. It's so, on off, but it seems to have some gain makeup in it. It it definitely yeah. has a little, like like a little jump to it, but it's yeah. it doesn't seem like it's huge compression. I think the main goal is like if you want to get more compression out of it, you probably are turning your mic up. And, it, right. and you're like running into whatever curve they give you. Like that's how you kind of, yeah. your gain I is your so. adjustment. Yeah, if you want to hit the compressor, you just crank up the input gain and now I'm really hitting the compressor and yeah. then I can back it off and then I'm not hitting it as hard. So it's it's not bad. I mean, I wouldn't have any argument against using that for live streaming, podcast, et cetera, mm. or an audition or something, mm. um, but it's usable. Mm. Now we get to the interesting ones. Aphex. So they have the Aphex Oral Exciter in the big bottom. Here's the Oral Exciter. The Oral Exciter. Um, I used to have a girlfriend nicknamed like, that. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a dog name. And uh, it's, uh, it's, well, there you go. That's the Oral Exciter. It's, it's not my to my taste. Um, what's, what's interesting is they have the Oral Exciter, but there is, is there a DSer on this thing? I forget. No DS. No DS. So it's like watch out. A, the Aorl exciter without the DS is a danger. Yes, it's very sibilant. Yeah. Watch out. So there's your exciter. Now we have every guy's favorite. Big bottom. Big bottom. <laughs> big bottom My mic's big got bottom. Talk about mud flaps. Um, yeah. So I don't think it's over. I mean, I it's hard. I'm monitoring myself, so it's very hard for me yeah. to judge. Is it yeah. over? Can you turn it on or, or is it turn it on and off there. on and off or something while you're talking? So here's with the big bottom on, and now here's with the big bottom off. Uh, Here, give us like yeah. a big low note and go ooh, and then turn it on and off. So while here's you're just going with like, the big bottom on. The big bottom is on. Now the big bottom is off. No big bottom. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's there. It's, it's, it's definitely not bad. There. It's not too heavy subtle. handed, but it's it's definitely yeah. there. I think they know? aired on more subtle than a more over the top. Which kudos to them again. Yeah, it's a because it's a tough thing a, to put that in there and have it be not over overbearing so it's useless exactly. and then have it enough that people are like well, it's bullshit right yeah. Yeah. now let's find out we got to do the thing where you turn everything on so here we go 
This is mashing all the buttons. <laughs> you got the gate on, the Listen compressor, the exciter, <laughs> and the big bottom. Do wow. I sound like I'm on the radio? Wow. Wow. It's it's no. got it. it, it the, the gate's the one thing I would definitely turn off. The the rest of it's kind of if you want to do it. it yeah, yeah, I don't know that I I don't know that I'd turn the big bottom on either, I'll be honest. It sounds yeah, Very, I mean, if I'm sending this to Robert, which I am, I'm on Robo. Robo. I would want Robo to make those choices, but for today's show, Robo will probably <laughs> just let it let it ride until yeah. you guys can hear it as it really sounds. But uh, 169 yeah. US, a lot of stuff for 150 bucks. That's the thing yeah. about it. No one's touching this kind of stuff for 160 no. or whatever it is dollars. I, I, don't, I think. don't think so. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And just just one so, thing to be. A, just, on, to, sorry, ju- just to clear up what George just said, for today's show, George is completely unaffected because he's on the mic. So besides a little bit of two mixed compression, uh, George is what you're hearing from George is straight off the uh, the mic. Right. I mean, we're all we're all on USB pluses, right? Except for no, me. I'm not. No, I'm not yeah, either. Not <laughs> I haven't got a I USB-C plug Andrew. on the back of my computer. I, and I'll so tell you why. Remember. I'll tell you why I'm not because uh, there's. And I, I think it's a Steinberg thing, because um, when I got Isotope RX7, every now and then I'd open up one of the, you know, whatever processing from Isotope, and it would crash WaveLab. And I don't. It wasn't consistent. It was just every now and then it would do it. You'd be halfway through a thing and edit or whatever, and it's like mm. shut down, gone. This is on the Mac now. That was on the PC, but it was oh, WaveLab, and now and I. What I did when I got the at the NT USB Plus, I plugged it into the Mac Mini, and I recorded on WaveLab, mm-hmm. and basically WaveLab just went spastic after I unplugged and tried to go back to a normal session, to the point where I had to get Richie, the tech, to come in. Yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't answer that it. call for you. Yeah, cause I, I did send you a message, yeah, that's right. So what did it do? Did it corrupt a sound driver? It or did something it really weird where I could... If, if I was using WaveLab, I could either record or play back, but I had to keep going into the back end in preferences and make switching them over. It wouldn't allow me to just do a normal session. So, we had so to, WaveLab couldn't oh. use it for record and playback at the same time? Like if I, if I did a record and I had monitoring, the actual record wasn't there. It was just blank. Is there a mini on Monterey or on Ventura by chance? Uh, Monterey. Okay, so it's not on the newest OS, so that we can't necessarily blame it on the OS in this case. No, but, um, it was yeah, it was weird. Really it was really weird. weird, and uh, so I had to get Richie to basically kill mm. WaveLab, and we had to reinstall. See here, all along we've been telling you, just get a Mac; it just works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but then I actually plugged it into the. the I'm beginning to think it's Andrew. <laughs> yeah, but then I plugged it into the MacBook using Twisted Wave. Not a problem at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't had any problem with it. The one thing I did notice is that one time I was able to get it stuck with the uh, blend knob not working because when you launch the software, then the blend knob no longer is the blend knob and it goes over to the software that controls the blend. Yep. And one time I was able to get the mic to have the software gone, but the blend knob was not there. It still wasn't working. And then I had to unplug it and plug it back in. And then I was like, oh, yeah. That's weird because I, I thought the knobs on the mic were were hardware knobs, not firmware knobs. No, it's firmware no, because firmware. when you launch the software, the I mean, maybe not the volume knob, but the blend knob is disabled, I believe. Uh, well, that's why your blend knob is different than mine, maybe. Because mine, I have mine about twelve o'clock, and it's a perfect blend between you and me. But you said you have to have yours way over at like nine o'clock. Yeah, I I have my headphones cranked, and I don't know why this is because no one else has this. But I literally have the headphones all the way up, and the blend is almost ninety percent towards playback, which is you guys. Because if I turn that slightly, man, my mic is so much louder in my headphones. If I go Mm -hmm. even like to like twelve o'clock, it's insane. Yeah. In so fact, that, there's like a little does, there's like a little um, cliff in the knob that you can feel. Like, that definitely means that definitely sounds like a firmware thing. Like that mic sounds like the firmware is funky. Like you need to figure out a way to refresh the firmware. In my opinion. Here, let me let me do this. I'm going to go launch the uh, software. That's usually what. Hold on. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm running the Rode Central software now, and the blend knob works as I would expect, and. Uh, 
it seems to be working nicely. Although, interestingly, there's no firmware update. Is there a firmware update in the software? No, not that. I, there's a factory reset button. That might be what Robert needs to click is factory reset. So now it's now it's exactly uh, my my blend knob is no longer controlling the blend. Correct. And you, yep. And you guys can hear me. Yeah, but yep. how I, I have the software open and I am controlling the blend with the knob. Right. Oh, Cuz I'm in I'm in Road Connect. And then if I turn the knob Oh no, up, no, 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 no. I'm on Road Central. Right, You're I'm on, on Road, Road Connect. Connect. Yeah, but you can't Wait a minute. Can wait you, a minute. That's different software. Yes, it's different software. Can you get to Wave? What, what's the one you're using, George? Road Central. I think one of them I tried, there was two things you could download when I set up the mic. And one I got, which was, and I have to have a look at my laptop in the tick, uh, but the other one, it said oh, it, it, it wouldn't work, work on, yeah. on my laptop, yeah. And Correct. I've got my yeah. Harvey 10.14.6. Same problem oh. I had. That's the same They're problem I had that I, that I wrote their tech support about. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so what I'm using is Road Central, which is just a very simple it's a controller for the switch mic. for yeah. the mic and doesn't that give you it doesn't do anything else. It just turns on and off those features and has input gain. So Rode Connect is like a mixing interface, right? Yeah, it's basically and gives you more control over what multiple mics. Is anybody is else getting a bunch of noise from Robert now? Oh, you are. No, what are I'm you getting? Like a me. hiss. Like a oh, you're getting my oh shit! Hiss. I did the classic voiceover. Oh, I'm such a dork. Yes, I am a huge dork. I hope the the recording you have of me is shit. Now it's gone. You want to know why? Now Robert's gone. Now he's back. No, says the noise. Oh fuck. <laughs> okay, you're gonna need. Uh, is it recording? Oh, because he changed recording. over and he's. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to be playing with Road Connect in the middle of the session. <laughs> I have to restart uh, my Mac. There's a lesson there. No, that's not why it happened. That's not why it happened. He's, he's sending Source Connect with a Here different interface, I think. There you go. Now, how do I sound? That's Robo? better. Yeah. Do that's you know what I did? I did? I did. You haven't been I on did it. the classic voiceover bonehead mistake. What did I do, everyone? <laughs> you haven't been on it <laughs> the whole time the for me, have you? Didn't set the input. What did, what did I do? I, I left the input on what mic was time. it? Like I'm using sort of... You're on a different mic No, I've been feeding you now. the stupid the built-in mic, mic the whole time. He's been on the built-in <laughs> yeah. mic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't, I didn't even know he was supposed to be on the USB. I got a recording for you, man. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's funny. So if I talk about this Road Central, if I go to Road Central, it tells me you can't use this version of the application Road Central with this version Cause, cause of Mac OS. Yeah. yeah. Right, so I had the same problem, and I gave up, and I wrote their tech support, and they gave me something else, and it still didn't work. Basically, what it is is it's the software of the Rode Caster. So, like the Rode Caster's got four mic preamps, right? Yep. Yep. But if you hooked up four of these USB microphones into a computer yeah, and the then used their software, it'd be kind of like having a Rode Caster. Right. Ah, Not as sexy. Interesting. Though. You don't get the button. I mean, you do get the buttons. If I switch my input, you'd get like. You know the the crowd and the and the buttons to push with the little samples, so you do get that stuff. And also, you you can control the. I think you can control the level. Like, tell me this: Am I getting louder to you guys when I do that? No, no, no I didn't. Okay, so that's noticeable. just my level. Do you know how it disables the the blend knob on each on my microphone? Hmm. Yeah. So I believe what would happen is to disable the blend knob on all the microphones, and then I would you be able control to control it. the mix for yep. all the microphones. There you go. Which is probably sensible if you're doing a podcast. Yeah. Right, for sure. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. They think of everything, don't they, old road? Got to say. It's pretty well thought out. And it's like, it, you know, it's at that really amazing, like, really? Price point? Like, yeah. It must be really cheap. And then you get it and it's like, no, it's not cheap. It's it's like a real mic. It's got, you know, like some of the stuff is like sort of roughly thought out, like the gate, but it's there and it's not, um, you know, I wouldn't use it, I guess, the gate in particular, but if it was an expander, maybe. But it's, I mean, but the rest you know, of the stuff is sort of like, yeah, I guess, you know, like click yeah, it on and off, yeah. very push buttony yeah. and effective, but not overbearing. And it's, they seem to have like threaded a needle of some sort, right? Because it doesn't I mean, have a lot of controls. Yeah. And, and just thinking about what you're saying about the buttons and stuff, I mean, here's a question for you. I mean, we all, you know, like even for this show, I have a template that opens up and, you know, the compression that I set up 
for you is there or even for anybody on the show, but you've always got to tweak it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't know that, you know, well, it's serving a purpose for podcasters or whatever who may want to compress their voice or, or do some of that other stuff. I, I don't think there's, I think you'd struggle to find a set and forget that works for everything, let's be honest. No, it's, yeah. it's, very, it's very broad strokes, right? It's burning the compression and all that stuff into the recording. I think it's for the crowd that wouldn't do anything otherwise. It just yes. gives a little bit of polish to the whole thing, maybe makes it better. But if not, you wouldn't know where to start with yeah. EQing and compressing. It's like yeah. you're, barely, you're barely editing your podcast. <laughs> you're just like you're graduating from the one take podcast to the edited podcast. My question to you, Robert, and I flagged this before you jumped on. Would that be a microphone, the NT USB Plus? Would it be a microphone you'd chuck in your bag and do a session with if you were on the road? It's definitely like wow, like the whole setup is small. I'd be afraid of breaking the windscreen in my bag. I think I'd crush it. It's so I'd be a little bit afraid of that. But they give you that sexy um, little bit of foam to go between the the popper stopper and the mic, though. Oh, that's right. There is. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I didn't get that. that. It's in the box. There's it was a part big of the packaging. Bit of foam, part of the packaging that goes in between the microphone and the um. Oh right, right, right. Shield. Yeah, you're right. Maybe that can be reused. Um, yeah. That's that's interesting. But no, I, I I think you could definitely do some damage with it, especially if you keep those controls off for the most part. It's like jam the headphones, USB plug in there. You got everything you need. You can do it quick. You know, it's it, it kind of reminds me of it, like a mic port pro, but you know, it's like the microphone's attached to it. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. Can't separate the mic, but it's not bad. Like yeah, but what about the quality of the the audio? Would you seems um... seems fine. Yeah. It doesn't seem that harsh, right? I, I was kind of expecting for a little bit more of the NT-A, what is it, the 1A or NT-1A is the one that... Yeah, you know, kind of NT-1A, like, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it doesn't sound that thin. It seems to have, even, I don't, I don't have anything turned on right now. No, I do. Holy shit, I got everything turned on. <laughs> Sorry, because I launched the software. Yeah, here, let's turn it all off. Yeah. There you go. Do I sound different now? <laughs> it does sound different, actually. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't sound harsh. It, I was, I, I think it's not bad for a hundred and fifty dollar mic with some mm. DSP. In yeah, it. it's uh, less harsh than the NTG NT. Um, what's the first shotgun we got from them? The NTG four. NTG four. NTG four. Yeah. yeah, like that yeah. one's that one's harsher than this for sure. I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, we were talking about that the other the other week, AP and I, we were talking about that with Dan Brum. And my my memory of the NTG4 was that it was really dark for some reason because I I was never really in love with it because I always felt it was a bit too dark. I, I like you know, it I for the it bag toppy. because it travels so well, right? It's a shotgun. It's like there's mm. there's no better mic that you can like have as far as like mm. compact. And then when you're in traveling and you've got who knows what, the polar pattern of the shotgun is useful. So I would go for that mic more, but the problem with that mic is that it doesn't have your headphone and your interface built into it. So now you're like got a bunch of other crap. So that makes this one better for the bag because it's just like one deal and you're done. But the stand doesn't fold up, right? It, it's like you need to go find no. you, yeah. you can get a different stand, I guess, that collapses down. Maybe a different windscreen in case you're worried about breaking the plastic one because this one is nice. I wouldn't want to break it in my bag. And I think the rest of it, It'll probably survive the bag pretty good if you just put it in a little leather pouch. Like you might, you might, yeah. you might dent your windscreen, but that's never made a mic not work. You know, that just gives it some charisma. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious. I might even. I might give it a whirl and just take it with me. I'm. I just. I'm just wondering. Once you know, Robo gets a chance to really work on it and and compress and EQ and whatever and just treat it like it's going to be a radio imaging session and see if the mic actually breaks under that kind yeah. of processing. I can't really see. Processing. Can, can you see in there to see the diaphragm? Like the way they got it, you, in the light, you can't really see what's going no, on. No, I tried to see it too. I was looking at that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's the, um, that'll be the tell, I reckon, for me, is, you know, if you were, will it have that classic USB, well, not classic USB, will it, will it have that funny, you know, USB sound once you start fucking with it big time. 
Mm. It's 24 bit. Like the other NT, the old NT USB not being a plus was 16 bit. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like, I think it's 48K only. It's got some interesting limitations. It can't do 44.1. So you're not doing like GarageBand with it. Yep. Um, so that's like kind of like a little bit of a whoops. But, you know, GarageBand's like 44.1 only. This mic's like 48 only. I don't see that they work together, actually. I wonder what happens. Maybe they don't. I like think you just sent me a challenge now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but but I think they they like made a product that was for a very specific thing, and I think they kind of nailed it in a way. It's just like mid level. I want to do podcasting, and I don't know. I I barely like I can plug USB cables in. That's the extent of it, and I can kind of like launch the software and click record. It's pretty, I think, I think for like the really straight ahead, like podcasting thing, they kind of got a pretty good spot there because the price point is so good and the features are there. It's like, yeah, it, it, it's going to be hard for anybody to really get in on the overall feature set. Cause it's with the DSP. That's the kick. Do you know who they remind it, but who road rem, um, reminding me of at the moment, they're reminding me of Apple. Yeah. They're like wow. a, the audio version of Apple. They're just, you know, like even their packaging being everything's white now. Mm. And well packaged too, might I say. Beautifully packaged. I'd, I'd agree with this. With with Rode, Rode they are like, they're just like, we're going to stick to that dot. We're going to we're gonna do our like gold dot on everything, everywhere somewhere there'll be a gold dot. And they have a pretty good vision of, what their customer is because it seems like they're not yeah, like trying to do. go like ridiculously high end and they're def definitely not trying no. to go low end. They're just trying to like shoot right for the meat of the market with most of their products. Like the highest end mics they do are those TF mics, right? Yeah. But most of the stuff is very like they did videographer. I'm a working person. I need to get good sound. I don't need to blow my budget because I'm not one of the people that care about audio that much, but I want effective and good and good for the price kind of a yep. like honestly a spot that that sure was like doing for a long time mm. sure yeah that like was their lane for a long, long while wasn't it yeah but not neumann you know it was interesting because i remember road released that a ribbon mic a few years back and i don't know what's happened to that whether they're still selling it or well, for no for idea. a while, a road was coming out with like we got a tube mic, we got a we got a shotgun, we're we're gonna do one of everything, and and they weren't really finding their their niche. But I think that they found a niche with videographers and and people that need quality audio stuff, but they're not necessarily audio people, but they still need good audio stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, but it's interesting to see what the places you actually see their product. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're going to a commercial studio and you, you'll you see something from Rode in it, pretty well every studio you go to. There'll be something. Yeah. Mm, I guess um, so, yeah. I mean, you'll you'll see a lot of NT1s, like they kind of after the Marshalls, the MXLs, but they, they got in there and see a lot of those. And then I guess, what's the other mics you see? Like some of their early Valve mics, some of the studios have those. The, what is it? The yeah, the K2, K2 I think stuff. it's called. I yeah, tell you I, where you do see a lot of road gear is on um, is on YouTube, <clears throat> like content creators. That's and what I'm saying. That's I, I think yeah. that's where they. Yeah. I see. I I think that road isn't you know like when when you look at music studios, yeah, there's some. But if you see a lot of road stuff out in the world, it's more like on a desk in a podcast studio, maybe a broadcaster, you know. Yeah, broadcasters everywhere. Yeah, I've seen I've seen like uh, the NT two A. I've seen those around quite a bit. Um, the K two, being the the tube mic, and the NTG three, surprisingly, right. But the three, which is the one that's really quite dark. Yeah, the the five is the really good one. I mean, it's funny because yeah. it's like they, they they do have some standout mics. I think the five is actually like I really I'm I'm bummed that I never like I'm you know. I, I really wanted to try out those uh, TF mics. Oh yeah, I was yeah, exactly. Really yeah. looking forward to that, but that didn't happen. Yeah, they have a really broad range of stuff. I mean, they've got like little videographer, like wireless mic stuff that's simple and clever. You know, it's like the microphone and the wireless pack is just in one thing that you just clip. There's no wire even. You just 
put it, clip it on someone's shirt kind of thing. And just with all the right eighth inch connectors to go into the DSLR camera is like the kind of, it's that mid-level like people that are doing a lot of video stuff and their their video is up to game and their audio isn't and they mm-hmm. want to step their audio up, but they're they're just not an audio person. So they're not coming in with all the Neumann baggage, right? They're not. They're they're worried about like quality stuff, and the right price point. And I th- and I think that they just found a hole in the whole desktop market. Like, you know, Sure was scooping up the live market really well, and they came into the desktop market with that SM7. Like the the do you, do you know which one I'm talking about? It's like a small version SM77. I think it is MV7. MV7. There you go. So yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. sure comes out with that, which is like a great, like, because you do see a lot of podcasters, the high-end ones, and they're running SM7s. And it's a good mic for that. It's yep. very forgiving, but full sounding. Joe Rogan. Broadcasty. Yep. Right, yep. exactly. So then sure follows that up with the MV7, which has got a USB interface and XLR, which is really great. But still it's like the price point on that thing. How much is that MV7? JB Hi-Fi here in Australia sell them for four hundred and twenty-nine. So it'd be about three hundred US, I'm guessing. Right. So, so you're getting the Shure, and it's a you know like definitely like the SM7 is a very serious mic, and if the MV7 is, we've not I've not tried it, so assuming it's got that same heritage and whatnot. Um, but then here's this mic, a condenser with DSP and your headphones, and your you know it's because for instance, does the Shure have your headphones? Oh, actually, hang on. Hold the phone. What's that on top there? I don't see. Oh, no, it, has, it does have headphones. I think it does on the top there, doesn't it? Isn't no, no, on the is? back. It's got headphones on the back, and so maybe there's some controls. So they so they got that right. At least they, they it, it's like a full USB microphone. Maybe it has a blend knob on there somewhere. Yeah. So here's your, you know, here's your competitor. It's a dynamic, much bigger broadcast heritage. Hopefully it sounds like an SM7. Um, but it's sixty dollars more. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Well, the four. Yeah. Yeah. The short here is four ninety nine, and then what are we looking at? The road. The USB Plus is two sixty nine here, and the dude. No, these things are very, very similar. Holy shit! I stand corrected. With the Sure Plus MOTV Motive Desktop app. You get access to Sure's extensive DSP control inside the app. You can choose from a selection of EQ pre- presets, dial in custom EQ, compression. Sure Plus Motive app also makes recordings easy, no matter what device you're using. The Sure, well, I don't know if it's not not for us. The Sure is two hundred and twenty four dollars here, so two twenty five versus NT NT USB Plus one seventy. There's a $50 price difference, which at that low of a price, it is like, you know, an eighth or... So it is... The, the Shure is definitely more expensive. There's no doubt. But they're going for the same market, I would still argue, don't you think? Uh, yes, I'd say definitely. And they and they probably sound very different. I mean, one's a dynamic, the other one's a condenser. Look at that NT-USB Mini. That's tiny. Yeah, I've got one of those. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, right. It's it will be good for what you're talking about podcasting or yeah. you know streaming and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You would not use it for a oh no, I wouldn't else. expect you no. to. But that that was a, that's my ongoing question with this the NT USB Plus whether you could use it for a session. The, the sure by having the XLR definitely steps it up a bit into the more pro range. Yeah, I gotta say, it, Andrew, to answer your question for me, I think I don't know that I could answer that right now. For the reasons yeah, that I've okay. sort of mentioned before, I don't. It's just that if it comes to USB, you gotta like, it's a mic preamp that's buried in there. It's less control. You're stuck with that mic preamp forever. There's no flexibility. Yeah, um, I think it. And once you start, once you start compressing and manipulating that signal, is it going to bring out stuff that maybe you're not hearing? I don't know. I, I've never, I've never really used USB mics before, so it's sort of me just thinking. What are the I th- variables? I think you just got to think of a USB mic as a normal mic. That it's possible yeah. it doesn't run on forty-eight volts. It might run on slightly less p- phantom power, because yep. I think that that's one thing that might happen internally. Is like if if we don't have to, 
do a standards compliant 48 volt microphone. We need some voltage to make a condenser, but USB doesn't have 48 volts. So they're gonna have to put a whole voltage converter in there or do they maybe just power it with what they have somehow? I'm with not what's sure. There. So what's, it's 12, is USB what, 12 or nine? Or There's a couple of voltages five? in there. There's definitely a five volt in there and, and there yeah. might be something else. Mm, interesting. But yeah, the, the, I think uh, maybe that might have to be our first episode for the new year then. Maybe I might, uh, during the holidays, I'll, I'll give it a slam and a play with it and see what comes out of it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious. And I, I think, you know, because we keep saying about USB, Mike, as if it's some derogatory thing, um, maybe it's not. Yeah. Well, I mean, five years ago, or, well, you know, maybe even a little bit longer, you know, USB mics were the bottom of the thing but I, oh, absolutely. the way technology is changing you know that that however long that is seven eight five years ago is um is a long time in the terms of the evolution of all this stuff so jesus and i, and I think yeah, I mean, road have proved from what i've heard already that you know with this mic that you know if anyone's gonna get there road are doing it well yeah and I think we've all got used to USB stuff anyway, because look at all the big companies making USB interfaces, yep. SSL, yeah. audience. No, there's, yep. there's nothing wrong um, with USB as a data transport and all that. And I think more the thing with USB is that initially, you're right, it focused on a lower end of the market. So there weren't like super high quality mics attached to those USB. But ultimately, what does happen is that if you get a USB mic, that mic is forever attached to whatever interface is in there. And at some point, it's just not going to work anymore with any computer, maybe. And it's always going to be kind of a basic interface. So now you've got a mic that's not going to blend very well into any other setup. It's very cornered and limiting. And you're like, I, I always recommend if someone's going to spend like a couple hundred dollars on a microphone, if, if, if it's got an XLR adapter or port to it, the microphone's going to last you longer. It's going to have more applications and more, you know, the other, I mean, the other mic that this competes with, I was just thinking is the, uh, the venerable Yeti and they sold the crap out oh, of really? those. Yeah. Cause this is at that Yeti yeah. price point. It's yeah. not stereo, but it has DSP and I, I'm willing to bet the elements a little bit better. I think the Yeti was mm. groundbreaking in how inexpensive, like they really hit something with that mic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They did hit something. That's well, they, right. <laughs> they sold a lot of them, you know, and they were they were just yeah. on that like I don't hear the difference. It's good enough to me. Uh, the amount of times I see that on forums and shit is like, yeah. oh, oh, please don't start me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm curious to find out what this revolution preamp is that they've got in there. It's obviously a trademark of some sort or mm. company they've picked up. Is the revolution preamp in the in the road? Yeah. Ooh. Is, wait, wait, what does Personas you... do? Personas is the revelation. Uh, revelator. The revelator. So you got the revolution and the revelation. Revelator. <laughs> it's a trademark. Revolution is the trademark. I, I wonder. So, it's like, yeah. it's it's definitely a one-chip preamp. I don't think it's, there's not a lot of room for big fancy preamp in the, in the inside the body, you know? Yeah. It's got to be a chip. Yeah. It, you know, it sounds like it. I, yeah. It sounds... You can't knock it. You know what I mean? It's like you turn the stuff on and the processing is not too heavy handed, but good enough and not for everybody, but better than nothing often. Yep. And then with it off, it just sounds like a mic. It doesn't seem harsh or, or too thin. It seems, if anything, boring, but it doesn't sound like it's like it's missing stuff, right? Yeah, well, boring is actually good. Yeah, exactly. Because you can start with a blank slate. Yeah, totally. that's what you want. Yeah, I mean, cool. If I turn it up here, oh wait, I can't turn it up here. I'm running the software. I have to turn it up over here. <laughs> don't, break, don't, don't touch <laughs> it, Robert. Break it. I have to turn it up here. Oh well. Check, check. Well, it's Christmas time. Yeah, it is. And I think Santa came early from Road. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank Road, you, Road. Thank you. There might be something to use from this episode, and whatever it was, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Merry Christmas from us. <laughs> this one is like a Christmas present. It, 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 you're, up to the wrapping stage, you have no idea what's inside. <laughs> oh, well, I still don't still know what's inside. It, trying to work, yeah, we're trying to work it out as well. <laughs> uh, uh, take care, gents. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas to you. Happy have New Year. Have a great Year. Christmas. Thanks, and I can't wait to join you again for our next 
entertaining and unpredictable episode. The shambolic pro audio suite. <laughs> 2023 will return. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Tribooth. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. Theproaudiosuite.com.